Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a, another episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host Ted. Uh, sorry that I didn't do an episode yesterday, I just, I just fancied a bit more of a relaxing evening, but I'm back today again with uh, a compatriot who many of you will have not seen on this channel in about a year and a half, which is Phil aka Flash Suppressor. Hello, welcome to Ted's Booze Cellar, happy to be here. Um, so. I mean, we usually every year we kind of sort of like tend to sort of give each other alcoholic drinks as yeah. sort of like a gift. Um, usually, you tend to get me some sort of like flavour of absolute vodka. Mm. Um, however, this year you've got a bit different. You've got me some like German like winter liqueurs, which I'm probably going to review close towards autumn time. Yes, we have here. First of all, Glühwein. This is a standard kind of Glühwein that you all find on draft in sort of uh, or on the boil in. Sort of your Christmas market staffed by Lithuanians, and uh, yeah, it's basically just mulled wine with a very specific set of herbs and spices in it. And then there's like a non a non alcoholic one there as well. Yes, Kinderpunsch, Children's Punch translates as, and uh, essentially it's the same types of juices with the same types of spices as close to the taste as possible. So come winter or autumn, when uh, Ted gets around to uh, reviewing these in sort of the appropriate time of year for anyone who by that point hopefully is able to travel to Berlin or some part of Germany where you might be able to get a glass of this at a Christmas market he will be able to do a compare and contrast of the alcoholic versus non-alcoholic so we'll sort of see how that goes. Now we got each other some drinks uh, that we're going to review today um, so uh, th so this one uh, is one that Phil got me here which is a uh, Kind of like honey mead, right? Yeah, it's, it's honey mead, yeah. Yeah, so this is a uh, Eastern European Germanic honey mead. Um, and then I got you. You got me a red velvet cupcake Baileys. Yeah, so a bit more a bit more indulgent, but nonetheless, I think these should both be pretty good. Um, so we're going to sort of review both of these in today's episode. Uh, Same we... colour as well, probably enough, almost. Are they? Well, they're vaguely pink. That's... Right, okay. Anyway, um, I think best probably start off with what I think is probably going to be the more less palate filling flavour, which is probably mm. going to be the mead. I don't know what, what about you? Uh, it's an intense flavour, but I would argue that the uh, sort of thicker, creamier drink should come afterwards. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. So. so, let's uh, try this out a bit first. So, how, uh, let me see. What the alcohol percentage of this is, is 6%. So, for like mm. honey mead, that's pretty standard. Probably... So it's slightly weaker, at least, than this mead, which I got for today from the wine barrel on Western Road, which um, which is a 12.5%, although this is a wine mead, so slightly this stronger. This is a wine mead as well. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was a beer one. So. No, no, it's not. Germans prefer that sort of wine mead. Definitely, yeah, definitely smells like wine, good God. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's definitely different to Scandinavian or British wine mead. Uh, meads which are like usually based out of ale or beer. Yeah. God yeah look at that. It does it does have like a look it kinda looks like a it, halfway between the colour of like a buckfast fizzy wine or a uh, or like a Merlot red. Yeah, yeah, or uh, like a Lambrusco or something. I think we should mention it's cherry flavoured meat, cherry infused. I don't think we brought that up. So yet. cherry infused uh, flavoured wine meat. Okay. Yes. That's what yeah. It is. So yeah, not exactly a, a following protocol considering I'm having it in a craft beer glass and Phil's having it in a Guinness glass. Yeah, that, that's not classy. Okay. okay. So yeah, it smells slightly spiced, but more than anything, it does smell like fermented cherries actually. Yeah. With yeah, a does. slight, with a slight. Um, There's with, a slight sort of tang of honey in there. Just about make it out. Yeah, it's a sort of honeyish, sort of slightly Shiraz kind of uh, aftersmell. So, um, yeah, um, we should have reviewed our old review of the original mead rather than this flavour, but then again, we can just go back and watch that later. Yeah, it should be fine. Anyway, um, what would you rate the smell out of 10? The smell? Uh, I would go with maybe a 6 or 7 out of 10. I was going to say 7. Strong, yeah. yeah, it's just not strong enough to really. Uh, leaving a big impression. I was going to say the same thing. I think all the smells are pretty nice, and it has like that sort of nice cherryish after smell. But yeah, not really much home to write about. What is there though is does smell nice, but it's just not really much to say. So yeah, I have myself a quick palate cleanser of water, and then on to the most important part of the first part of this video, which is to see what this tastes like. So bottoms up. Scroll. Mm. 
not as whiny as I thought it was going to be. No. It's decidedly more like syrupy, actually. Yeah, so I think that may be a byproduct of it sort of being infused with whatever they use to make it chilly. Mm. Yeah, it definitely. It definitely tastes like more like a cross between a very mild Shiraz red wine and like a cherry flavoured syrup liqueur. Mm. But like, not like a very candified one, just like a very sort of like syrupy, uh, natural syrupy one, I think. Um, yes. It's very, the texture, the texture is really smooth like syrup, in fact. Yeah. Um, and it sort of, um, it warms the heart a little bit, but it's like not to the extent where you feel a bit heartburny. So mm. it's actually quite, for such a heartwarming drink, it's actually quite a relaxing one as well. So um, I think I'm going to rate it probably, probably a good nine, nine out of ten, I think. Yeah, I'd go with that. I've just been uh, reading the label. Um, apart from the sort of historical stuff about how it comes from uh, Heitavu, which is a sort of place in uh, northeast Germany in Mecklenburg, which used to be a sort of Viking trading post, um, and they obviously sort of brought mead, and that's why that area is famous for it. It's uh, made. Uh, it specifically says it's made with cherry juice, which not only explains why it's syrupy, but also there's sort of relatively low alcohol content. I'd, I'd say the only thing I'd improve about it is I'd, I'd accent, if, if I made it in myself I'd accentuate the red wine flavour a bit more mm -hmm. I feel like if you had made that a bit richer it would probably really complement the cherry flavour really nicely but generally speaking it's damn near perfect uh, yeah so, so I think, I'd say so so I think it's well deserving of a 9 out of 10 what would you rate it? I too would rate it a 9 out of 10 I think I would actually rate the uh, normal Viking I made from this lot as a 10 out of 10 in fact I mm. think Based on uh, your somewhat comical reaction from that old review, I think you would as well. I think we both decided that was sort of as good as alcohol can get. I think yeah. So it, yeah, it's 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 difficult to get to a ten out of ten though. I think I think I've only ever given that rating out of like nearly three hundred episodes about like ten times. Right. So yeah. it's but um no, solid nine out of ten. Very pleased about it. So yeah. let's okay. review the drink we got you. Um, right. I'll kind of cleanse it. Oh, Great. Shit. Wonderful. It's like that time when I sort of got alcohol up my nose. You didn't notice when we were filming that one. That was when we did the uh, donut flavoured beer outside the pub. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, just before Christmas. Now, if you look in the background, you can tell when we were sort of sniffing it, I just got a load of it up my nose. I vaguely remember that, actually, yeah. So, complete spastic. So here we go. So, let's see. Uh, this uh, red velvet cake flavoured Bailey's is 17% uh, alcohol volume. And uh, yeah, it's, it says either have it as a cupcake shot with whipped cream uh, on the rocks with ice, or you can pour it into cake mix, which is actually quite an mm. interesting idea. Yeah. So yeah, um, I mean, if I drank enough of this, I'd uh, act a bit more like a spaz myself. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's weird because like Bailey's is like quite high in alcohol content, but it's like. Um, it doesn't make me actually act, like, act like more of a spaz because it's just like mm. it's quite a soothing drink. I don't know, maybe mm. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But uh, let's see, what's the uh, what's the color like? Okay, so it does look like yeah. like liquidized. Uh, it looks very strawberry-ish. Um, it definitely does look like it's made out of like liquidized uh, red velvet cake. So anyway, that, that's for you. So you better put the cup on that and save it for yourself for later. Right. So yeah, so. Smells like your usual Bailey's with a mm. kind of chocolatey tint. Um, I'd say vanilla, which basically is what red velvet cake is. It's just a vanilla cake that's coloured red. Hmm. Mm. All right. Well, I'm gonna have a quick palate cleanser of water. What would you uh, rate the smell out of ten? Smell out of ten, I would actually go a bit higher, surprisingly, than the cherry meat. I would even rate it maybe a seven point five to an eight out of ten, just because it's a bit. It's a bit stronger, and it sort of does it advertises what it's going to be like. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna rate the smell myself a. Probably like a. Probably like a seven out of ten. I think yeah. that that same. It's just like there's this slight sort of candyfied quality. I'm not sure about myself, but mm. I'm interested to see what it's like. So I'm gonna try it. But uh, um, but yeah, let's let's try to see what it's like. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Sweet. Um, 
the initial rush of like flavors is really strong. You get a big punch of alcohol content. But I think the more the flavor goes on, the more it um, kind of gets more soothing, which is weird. Like, say for example, like whiskey, or for, for example, it starts out smooth and then gets fiery and then like yeah. fizzles out. Yeah. With this, it's kind of weirdly in reverse. It starts off like punchy and then it sort of smooths out a bit. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yes, it is a lot smoother than even normal Bailey's. I mean, to be fair, normal Bailey's is a bit higher alcohol content than this stuff as well, isn't it? It's like twenty percent. Hmm. I mean, it does taste like red velvet cake so yeah. it fits the bill but yeah mm. it's quite nice i remember the texture being a bit rougher than this last time i had it maybe that's just me i don't know that's the thing i would say the texture of normal baileys is smoother myself okay um what would i rate this though i mean mm. normal baileys isn't doesn't like blow me away but it's like a nice relaxing drink when i fancy something mm. light um so i'd like to rate this uh, I rate this like the texture is like smooth, but it sort of like does sort of go a bit up and down. Um, like the flavour, I think, is the best part about it. It genuinely tastes like the red velvet cake that's been liquidised and uh, mm. fermented um, in like a nice creamy way. But I think I'll rate it um, like a good good seven point two five out of ten. I think I slightly prefer. Um, original Baileys and I definitely prefer the chocolate one but this is still really nice mm. yeah I mean as sort of my flavors of Baileys go I would say this is definitely up there I mean uh, I like the salted caramel Baileys probably the most with chocolate and normal babies Baileys maybe tie and then this one so I would yeah I have to sort of agree with you and say that it's sort of ranging between you know a seven and an eight out of ten yeah, it's perfectly fine. I, I'd probably say uh, this is wasted, sort of just drunk on its own. You would want to put this if you're having some really indulgent alcoholic milkshake or hot chocolate with a shot of alcohol in it, or that sort of thing. It's a good mixer. Yeah, or you'd want to mix it with, um, yeah, you'd want to mix it into a milkshake with like ice cream and like brownies in it. So yeah. I think that would be quite good. But uh, yeah, I think overall those two are very good drinks, and I think we very much appreciate them either way for as te in terms of gifts. So uh, mm. yeah, thanks for getting that mead for me, and I'm definitely going to be uh, chugging that. That well, not chugging that, but like very much surreptitiously enjoying it. So um, yeah, just taking a page of And thank you for this. This will definitely uh, be good to sort of have, sort of give something the occasional shot whenever I feel I need it. Yeah. Right, okay, well, um, I hope you guys all at home enjoyed that episode. Um, if you did, leave a like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out anything else I do uh, online, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. Um, if I can scrounge it up, I'll get Phil's book review channel description uh, link as well, and I'll put that in the video description. Um, is there anything else you want to add before uh, we traipse off? Oh, no, I think... Uh... Yeah, we've uh, covered everything pretty much. Uh, just going to say, stay safe, and you know, soon enough there'll be an end to gloom, and we can all go out drinking without any restrictions at all. We can all hope. All right, and if you're offended by any of our language in tonight's episode, I don't really care. But, mm -hmm. but look, send your complaints to the BBC. I mean, we're not affiliated with them, but it would be funny. I mean, after the way they covered the Denmark versus Finland game at the Euros recently, I think they've got more than enough on their plate. Yeah, probably. To be honest. That was, that was bad. Yeah, that was, was fault, that, that, that was even more of a PR uh, disaster than this episode of Ted's Busa, <laughs> but good lord. Uh, right, okay, so, uh, yeah, until next time, stay safe, have fun with whatever you're doing, drink responsibly, know your limits, wear a mask to the shops, wash your hands, and we'll see you guys next time at the bar on Ted's Booth Cellar. Bye-bye for now.